Hi, I'm Dr. Yoni Friedhoff. I'm a medical doctor and an assistant professor at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Ottawa, and I write the Weighty Matters blog. And a little over a month ago, I was invited to give a talk, would have been this past Friday, at a food industry breakfast on health and nutrition policy. I was invited by the Ontario Medical Association to give my thoughts on what the food industry might do to help improve public health. Unfortunately, three days before the talk, after, of course, the flights were booked and the hotels were booked and I'd cancelled a whole bunch of patients, without the courtesy of a phone call, the food industry disinvited me. And so I thought, well, the Internet's a great place. I've got my slides together already. Why don't I put it up there and maybe I'll reach more people than I would have had I been able to come. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I think the food industry can do. It's actually quite straightforward. Why I don't think they're going to do it and what we should do about it. And so I guess the easiest way to start is I think the food industry could stop suggesting that fiber and whole grains make sugary cereals a good idea. I think the food industry could stop putting cartoon characters on the front of cereal boxes and paying for stores to put them at eye level for kids. I think the food industry could stop suggesting that cookies are in fact nutritious, in this particular case more nutritious than milk, or that you could get whole grains in Tostitos, and that in turn might be healthful. I think the food industry could stop talking about no sugar being added to things. This particular product, it looks a lot like Twizzlers, it says no sugar added, and yet it has more sugar than actual Twizzlers. It's got 10 times the sugar of apples by weight, if instead you wanted your child to eat an apple. Or this particular fruit product, it's a fruit and vegetable snack. Again, it says it's got no sugar added, yet by weight, 79% of it is sugar. It's not that there's no sugar added, it's just that it gets added from concentrated fruit purees and juices. And I think the food industry could stop being disingenuous about that. I think the food industry could stop suggesting that grape juice is good for you. It says no added sugar ever, yet every single glass has ten and a half teaspoons of the stuff. That's the same amount as you'd get if you drank a quarter glass of maple syrup each and every day. I think the food industry could stop creating products that prey on children and parents. This product by McDonald's called Fruit Is is carbonated fruit juice. It's got more sugar drop per drop than Coca-Cola, and its television advertisements say that it counts towards a child's five a day. I think the food industry could stop using words to describe their products that make them sound not too bad. This particular one is the snack size McFlurry. And if you think that a snack would be a Snickers bar dissolved in a can of Coca-Cola, well, then this might be the snack for you because it's got the same number of calories as that Coca-Cola Snickers bar combo and it's got 15 teaspoons of sugar. I think the food industry could stop adding ground-up oat hulls to products, calling it fiber, and suggesting it's beneficial. Fiber coming from whole grains is one thing. Fiber being added to pulverized white flour is quite another. And same with pulverized cauliflower where this particular product, if you were to buy it, has more sodium, more sugar, and less protein than actual Kraft Dinner, and the nutritional equivalent of about a quarter of a serving of cauliflower. Why not just give your kids a quarter of a serving of cauliflower and some actual good food? Well, in part it might be because you think you don't need to if you buy Kraft Dinner Smart. The food industry could stop suggesting that Applesauce is a vegetable. In this particular case, each one of these peach apple carrot blends has half the fiber and one fortieth the vitamin A of a single solitary carrot. This product, a breakfast replacement that apparently is good and makes your kid not a zombie, contains nine and three quarter teaspoons of sugar per glass. Give your kid one of these a day for a year and you'll give them 31 pounds of sugar. I don't think that's good. And really, is there such a calcium emergency that the food industry needs to suggest that if you don't add sweetened syrup containing three teaspoons of sugar per serving, that your kid is going to suffer health-wise? 
That'd be like suggesting if they're not eating apples, you should give them apple pie. And what about DHA? This one, here's the copy. So the big ones read the label on the little one's yogurt, and they saw that the little ones were very smart indeed, which wasn't surprising because little ones has DHA. Now I found that surprising because on the label of little ones, it actually says zero grams of polyunsaturated fats, and DHA is a polyunsaturated fat. But the thing is, if you put minuscule amounts of something into a product, you're not allowed to say it's in the product, and the 25 milligrams per little ones wasn't enough to make the label. What it means is, is that if your child eats a little ones, and that you bought it because you wanted them to get DHA, they will consume the equivalent amount of DHA as they would have if they ate a piece of salmon the size of one-third of a pea. And here is Wonder Plus Head Start, food for thought, again geared towards parents to make them think it's a good plan. If your child eats 214 slices of Wonder Plus Head Start, they will have as much DHA as a single serving of salmon. But you sure wouldn't get that from that ad copy that the food industry could stop making. And for adults too, here's one that will help nourish your brain, pomegranate blueberry plus DHA. And if you drink eight liters of this stuff, along with the five cups of sugar and the pound of calories, you too will get the equivalent amount of DHA as you would in a single serving of salmon. And if you don't want juice or bread or yogurt, well, you can get basically Oreos with omega-3s in them too. And last, of course, in this cavalcade of wonderful ads is this one. If poutine is part of your routine, try vitamin water. Poutine, if you don't know, is french fries covered with cheese curds and gravy. And this ad suggests, indeed, that somehow this sugar water will confer some protection against poutine's regular consumption. What I think the food industry could do is stop lying. Here's an ad. Can't remember the last Coca-Cola ad targeted at children? There's a reason. And I'll read you the bottom because it's tough to read online. Parents tell us they prefer to be the ones teaching their children about beverage choices. That's why for over 50 years, we've adhered to a company policy that prohibits advertising soft drinks to children. That's awesome. Thanks, Coca-Cola. I guess this comic book ad that says Coca-Cola Classic is always great for good sports is geared towards adults. And that this race put on by Coca-Cola for children, and they do this all over the world, isn't designed to associate the Coca-Cola brand with that kid's happiness and fun. Nor, of course, is this float from the Santa Claus Parade. This float isn't designed to associate joy, happiness, Santa, with Coca-Cola? At least not to kids. No, this is for adults. And this year, for my wife's birthday, I'm going to buy her a Coca-Cola Barbie because this couldn't possibly be geared at children. Nor could this 100-piece puzzle for ages 5 plus be geared towards kids. Or this matchbox car. Or this Lego set. Or this stuffed cute bear. These are adult toys because Coca-Cola for 50 years has adhered to a policy of not advertising their beverages to children. <sighs> you know, I don't really blame the food industry. You might find that surprising, but honest to goodness, I don't. You know, I do think the ads are deceitful. I think they're unethical. I think they're misinformational. I think that the food industry folks who put them out there absolutely know that, but I still don't blame them for doing it. Because it's not their job to do anything but try to sell food. They have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders to make profits. They have zero responsibility to society to protect health. If you want to know who I blame, I blame us. I blame public health officials. I blame governments. Because we could theoretically do something about it. Here's a flood. This is Hurricane Katrina's flooding. 
And what did we do when there was a flood with Hurricane Katrina? We built levees. We stacked sandbags. And as you can see, not every sandbag in this pile is actually doing anything. There are plenty of sandbags just sitting there minding their own business. But that doesn't mean they shouldn't have been stacked. And we do have a flood right now. We have a flood of horrible foods, of misinformational advertising, of predatory marketing. We have a flood of processed foods, even in our homes. Looking at this graph from 1982 to 2002, we've seen the purchase of processed foods and sweets double. We have a flood. We need sandbags. But what we can't do is expect the food industry to fill them for us. We need to level the playing field. In order to do so, we need to set rules for the food industry, regulations for the food industry. Whether it's calorie postings on menus, soda taxes, subsidies for healthier foods, banning the zoning of fast food restaurants near schools, there really aren't many shortages of things that we can do to try to regulate the food industry's practice of misinforming consumers. It's their job to do so. It's our job to do something about it. And I'll tell you, these regulations wouldn't just benefit us, they'd also benefit the food industry. There are ethical people in the food industry. There are probably even ethical food and product manufacturers. But they are hamstrung by the fact that there is not a leveled playing field. We need to stop allowing the sorts of advertisements that I showed you up above. We need to stop allowing the food industry to target our most vulnerable and precious population, our children. We need to start doing and stop talking. And that is where we are failing. The food industry, they are doing their job. And there will be some times where profit and health collide and wonderful. But other than those rare occurrences... Their job is to sell cheap calories and to sell as many of them as humanly possible and to sit around and expect them to do something about it on their own without a level playing field is nonsense. We need to get off our own asses. We need to start pressuring people to legislate change because until we do, there will be lots of talking and there will be no doing. Thank you very much.